Hi everyone, this is Darren with SimNation just doing another uh, Zero to Hero video. Um, as you can see, Notre Dame's up. We are now 5-1. and one. Uh, A couple games have happened since the last one. I think last time I was looking at Army and then of course we played Minnesota and Massachusetts since then. Um, made some changes, and I'll talk through that in a second, but generally... Um, the Army game was a lot closer than I thought it would be. Barely beat Minnesota. Massachusetts was actually a bigger one. So we get a bye this week, which is good because the team's starting to have some issues. But uh, so far, what I would say is if you look over Hill, my offense is pretty horrible, especially in the passing game. My rushing game is doing well, and I may start emphasizing running the ball more uh, because I'm having more success with that than I am throwing it. And then the defense is generally doing pretty good. Um, 16th and 13th is good. With Zero to Hill, I always aim to have like a top 20 defense. I normally like to have a top 20 offense, but um, given some of the misses I had at quarterback, it's not really going to happen. Uh, so if we go in real quick, let's just look at it. I made some changes at quarterback. William Houston is now the quarterback, but again, he's likely going to, he may have, he may sit at some point, um, depending on how I feel about his performance. But as you can see, he's doing much better than the other ones in that he's almost a 60% pass, or uh, he's only thrown one interception, four touchdowns, almost 800 yards. Um, the rushing game is going along pretty well. I have a couple good running backs. Remember, I benched Alexander Stevenson uh, for Daniel Martez and Matthew Whalen. Whalen is having a really good... Uh, effort as a change of pace back uh, so he definitely is uh, one of my top performers receiving wise not much has changed changed Juan Morris is just doing exceptionally well uh, over the course of the season as I start to get closer to playing some human opponents I'm going to need to focus on how I move him around and we'll talk a little bit about that in this one um, and then on the defense again, I'm really happy with the defense so far. I'm starting to get pickups in interceptions, which is good. Uh, so Flores and Foley are doing well. Uh, last time we talked, if you remember, Foley was my leading pickoff artist. Flores has really started to come on, which is what I was hoping for. The team is doing really good at generating pressure. Uh, so as you can see, they're getting a lot of sacks. Uh, knockdowns, probably not as good as I want it to be, but... Uh, the fact that my defensive line, my main starters, are getting into the backfield is good. And, of course, Mullen is really distinguishing himself in that regard. Uh, they are forcing fumbles, maybe not as much. Again, turnovers is... I'm not turning the ball over a lot, which is good, but I'm also not forcing turnovers a lot. Uh, you can see here having some really good luck with the metrics I talked about before, which is catches allowed to target you traditionally want that to be somewhere around 50 percent or low 50 or lower uh you see like flores is doing that um holt i think is hurt if i remember correctly but it's starting to balance out a little bit but still getting some really good uh actually it's not holt that's hurt it's boring that's hurt um but they're still doing really good. Miss tackles is going to be a huge thing for me because I have a lot of people playing out of position. But over time, that should balance out. And then, of course, tackles for losses. I'm not seeing a lot of those. But also, most of the people I've been playing have not exactly been um, uh, passing the ball. I'm sorry, running the ball. They've been passing it. Uh, field goal kicking is a huge issue for this team. Um, that's a horrible percentage and I probably should bench him at some point, but I don't think I have a better kickle, honestly. Uh, Fred Anderson is the punnel. He's doing really good. So all in all, I'm happy with the way that the team is running. As you can see, Houston is the quarterback now. Glenn is the backup. Uh, the main reason why I made this change is, one, I wanted to put someone who had an arm in who was also agile and had some rushing ability. He doesn't have great hands. He's going to fumble if I run him too much, but it gives me a different option in the running game. Uh, Glenn is the backup because he has the highest intellect of the group. Uh, again, he should be able to complete the long passing game if that's what I want to do. I think right now I'm using a medium passing game. Uh, I do have to deal with injuries because I'm starting to see more and more of those pick up, but I have a bye week so I can deal with that. As you can see, injuries are starting to become a thing. 
Uh, in fact, my best uh, cornerback is still out. Um, but as you look here, is again, we talked about this before. Uh, against um, against my last opponent, which, which was UMass, uh, I thought UMass was susceptible to the run. So what I did is on first and 10 and first and short, I just forced the run to happen more and more. Um, I'll probably change this for my next opponent to where on second and short, I also changed that to one. And just on the short penalties, I'm just going to run the ball. Um, and then I'll throw the ball, and that should create some level of equalization will keep the computer from keying in on me. Um, now, if I really want to, I'll probably change this one to like 50 or 60, uh, depending on what I want, and just keep the shorts at one. I think I mentioned this before, when you have a one, it means that you're more likely going to run the ball. Uh, versus if you have a 99, you're more likely going to pass the ball. It doesn't mean 99%. It just means you're 99 times more likely to run the ball. It still doesn't mean that you won't. I'm sorry, it means 99%. 90 more In this case, it means I'm going to run the ball 99 more times than I'm going to pass the ball. But again, if the die comes up with a pass play, it's still going to happen. Um, Defense-wise, as you can notice, I'm not blitzing 100% except for on long plays. I'm keeping it somewhere around 13 to... 30, uh, depending on what I'm doing. I have mixed my playbook up between run and pass, and I'll show you that in a second. And then this is what I was kind of talking about earlier. I'm switching from long to balanced. Uh, it just opens up more plays for me. Um, and I have a quarterback who can largely make the long plays. Uh, and again, this is just based on what plays I have in my playbook. It's going to prefer the balanced plays over it, and if there aren't balanced plays, it's going to kind of just mix it up. Uh, as you can see, Juan Morris is still the main wide receiver, and what I'm doing with him is moving him around. Uh, so, like, next game I play, I may move him to wide receiver three. I may move him to wide receiver four. Uh, I'm just going to keep moving him around so that people can't figure out what I'm up to. Uh, with the CPU, they're not that smart, so I don't have to worry about it as much, but once I start playing some of the... Uh, better human coaches, I'm going to have to really start worrying about that. Uh, every week I go in and I look and see what's working and what's not. Um, like, for instance, I curve flats is not working. Um, and we talked about this. If it's a medium play and you're getting 3.4, that means you're getting a lot of incompletions. The play is not really worth keeping in the playbook. Um, again, looking here, these are running plays, so that that's okay. Uh, anything above 3.5 is actually a good running play. Uh, this is balanced. 4.3 is not horrible for balanced. It's just not great either. Double posts, again, seeing a lot of... This is a long pass play. It should be upwards around 8 or 10. I'm going to get rid of that because I'm getting a lot of incompletions. Uh, pitch right, uh, sweep left. I'm doing a lot of outside running, as you can tell. Fly is okay. I'm still seeing incompletions. That should be around 10 or 12, but I'll leave it in for now. Coral flats, this is about right. Uh, running back on doors is not working, so I'm going to get rid of it. Uh, this one means I'm getting sacked probably a lot, or I'm just getting pushed back, so get rid of those. I'm going to get rid of core flats. I don't know why core flats are not working. Get rid of read. Um, posts, again, it's a long pass play, but they're only four, so I'll leave it in for now. Uh, pitch right, I'll leave it in because I have to have 10 run plays. It's not horrible, it's not great, but these, like this, when you see this, this is what you should see with a long pass play. Maybe not 31.5, but somewhere around 10 or higher. Uh, if you're getting that, that means you're completing a lot. If you're getting it in the fours and stuff like that, and it's a long pass play, it means you're just not completing it. Uh, this one's okay. This is okay. This is okay. Quick out is a short pass. Three and a half is okay. It's not great, but I'll leave it in because I don't want to take away too much. I'm going to get rid of drag because it's just not working. Uh, the 1.5, I'll get rid of wide receiver outs. It's not working. Read is good. This is actually really good for a short pass play. Um, I'll, I have to keep this in, even though I would normally get rid of it. I'm running out of running plays I can choose. Uh, running back out, this is not a good one, so I'll get rid of this one as well. Um, and throughout the season, you're going to notice your playbook's going to get smaller. Now, what you can do is if you see plays that are working really well, like double post, 
you can then go into other categories and like find pro set to see if there's a double post and if there is add it if there's shotgun in a double post go ahead and add it um, but what you can see here is I'm starting to trim the playbook it's getting smaller and smaller and that's kind of what I want um, counter left I mentioned I just got to keep that for now uh, go back to play calling so We'll go back to offense, uh, new offensive playbook. Um, I don't think I've made many changes here. Uh, so get rid of that because it's not working. Um, a lot of these are short, shorter plays, so I expect them to be lower. But in general, I may want to, yeah. Do I pitch left on the other one? Um, so now maybe two tight end pitch left. I do not. So I will want to add that. So when you, if you use multiple playbooks, the beauty of it is you can also see which ones are working. Uh, I think I said pitch left. Um, so go ahead and add that. And now what I can do is I can get rid of that 2.6 that's bothering me. Um, so just get rid of that. And, and again, it's only one play, but it's still something to think about because they ran for 44 yards and touchdown. Uh, pitch right, get rid of that. I don't want that. Sometimes it's okay to keep it in even though it's underperforming because what it'll do is allow the defense not to key on you. Um, so that's offense. If we look at run uh, defense, you can see I'm getting some pretty good numbers here for the run defense. Um, this play's got to go because it's not working. Uh, I'm okay with the fours sometimes because the fact is is those are probably pass plays. And if it's under five, I'm okay with it. Now, if I f look and see its run plays, I'll fix that. But for now, I'm going to leave those in. Um, pass plays again. This is a good spread. Uh, the six, I'm going to keep this one in because I've picked it off a play. But generally, if it's five and under, I'm okay with it. Like, I may get rid of this one. Um... Generally, I try to keep my plays above 10 in a playbook just because it keeps the CPU from keying. Uh, but as you can see, things are working pretty well. Training, I don't need to change anything right now. Um, I have the right people. I'm keeping it low on 20 because I'm worried about my, um, I'm just worried about injuries and I'm also worried about the uh, endurance on some of these people. Because as you can see, I've got some people with less than 60 where they're just going to wheel down. Um, Staff-wise, what I would say is some of my problem has to do with my trainer. Um, he sucks, so I'll fix that in the off-season, um, where he's just not really good at anything but leadership. Uh, but right now, I'm 5-1, and one, so I'm not going to really mess with it. And again, recruiting is going okay. It's not going great. Um, Go to scholarship offers because that's what matters. Uh, as you can see, I don't have many. I'm going to lose out on people like Ralph. I'm definitely going to lose out on McLean. If we look at him, I'm pretty sure, yeah, I'm not going to compete against Miami, especially if he values market size. Miami has a bigger market size than um, South Bend does. So uh, if we look here... I can quickly see, am I going to have a chance? It's Louisiana Monroe. I got a chance against this, but the problem is he values prestige. Louisiana Monroe is actually one of the highest prestige teams in the league. Uh, so this is about the time I should cut and run. Uh, I'll probably give it one more week just to see if I can do it. I'll maybe home visit him. Uh, Luis McLean, again, we talked about him. All these guys, he doesn't care about prestige. He does care about winning, so I have a chance. It's just the market size is going to be an issue. Now, what I can do is emphasize what I'm good at, which is winning and loyalty. So uh, maybe what we'll do is I need to keep one in market size. I don't think he cares about location, to be honest with you. So we'll kick that up and we'll just see what happens. Uh, he's from Virginia, so I'm not going to have a good chance with him. I really like this guy and I'm keeping on him because my hope is that he will actually be pretty decent. Um, but again, as you can see here, I like the work ethic. That's a big deal to me. He values winning. Um, so again, I have a chance with this guy. He doesn't really care about loyalty. Uh, what's his next one? Market size. So I can deprioritize market size and bring up winning. 
Um, I don't think I have any more points, but I'm likely going to lose out because you've got uh, Stewart and Skeletal going after him, and uh, Louisiana Monroe and UCLA should beat me on all those nine times out of ten. This is another guy I really like. He's I think he's strong, uh, but I'm in good shape with him, so I've got a good chance. So anytime where you see like more than two in your low prestige team like Notre Dame is, I probably don't have a chance unless they value location or they value winning. Uh, so that's kind of recruiting. I'll finish this later. I'm just I'm going to straight down this right now. Um, so one of the things I do so that I don't have to click downwards is I just do this. Now, the challenge is, as you can see, is I don't have much budget left. Um, so I've got four scholarships. I'm probably going to wait for the transfer market. I'll probably keep this number around six or seven. So uh, some of these guys I'm going to come off of and I'm going to look for comp comparable people like Edmondson. I probably don't have a chance with them. Uh, the fact is that I have some interest is okay. Cold, uh, this guy's going to sign with me. He's not going to really have a choice, but he's like the 52nd best player on in Indiana. Uh, seriously, dude. Um, so that's it for now. Let me go and export. But um, doing well, making some good. Uh, the defense is really coming along well. You saw what I'm doing. I'm trimming the defensive plays every week. I'm trimming the offensive plays, adding some offensive plays, but I am using a dual playbook. And what that means is I'm using two different playbooks uh, depending on the down in the cir circumstance. So if there's something you want me specifically to cover throughout the season, let me know. I won't probably do another one tomorrow on this because, well, actually I may do another one tomorrow just because uh, the bye week will run and then I will be looking at playing West Virginia which I should be West Virginia. Syracuse, I should beat. I'm going to lose this one. Uh, so generally speaking, when you look at this, my schedule is kind of favorable to me making the playoffs at this point. I think I am actually ranked. Uh, but I've got to show up well against UCLA, and I can't afford to lose a game that I should win. Uh, Syracuse is a little bit of a trap game because that's DP, and I think he now has a version he can play again. Uh, so top 25 is 20. I'm ranked 23. So if you're interested in this league, it's a great league. I would recommend joining. I'll give you more information when I do the recap video I'm about to do. So hope you have a great night and hopefully this is helpful.